Hi YouTube, it's Bethany from Madeline Jean Antiques and Restoration. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys from start to finish of me transforming these beasts behind me. Check these out. Now don't these scream like the 1970s, 1980s? I found this vintage pair of end tables on Facebook Marketplace from a local gal here in my town and I snagged them up. Normally when I go looking for end tables and nightstands, I usually find just the orphan. Very rarely do I come across a pair of end tables and nightstands. I get asked a lot by people, do you have a pair? And normally I don't. So I had to snag these up. I'm excited to get started on these. They have good potential. Right now, <laughs> they just look boxy. They scream vintage, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just need to bring them into 2021. So my plan is I wanna brighten them up, maybe paint them white. I wanna sand the top. If you watch me here on my channel, you know I'm a big proponent on salvaging and highlighting natural wood whenever possible. Very rarely do I paint something completely 100%. I like dimension, I like a two-tone look, so we will be sanding the tops, doing something there, painting the bottoms, maybe adding some glaze because you might, be able, you might not be able to see right there from this angle, but the front of these end tables have some great detail. So I really wanna make that pop and make that a focal point. So you guys come along with me and you can watch me transform these chunky monkeys. Yeah, that's what I'm calling them. They're chunky monkeys. Okay, you guys, we're on the other side of my workshop. It is really, really cold. I'm freezing. <laughs> um, great old New Hampshire weather. We've been in a little cold snap lately and then we're supposed to get like 12 to 18 inches um, tomorrow night, so yay! Um, anyways, I'm gonna get started on these chunky monkey end tables. So I'm going to sand the tops first. That's what you're gonna see me do here. I'm gonna do a lot of things on time lapse, but I'll always explain what I'm doing. So if you're following along and you kind of want to replicate the look I'll be creating, you'll know how to do it, okay? Let's get started. <music> to look better. Here's the tops of them sanded. And now I'm going to sand the sides as much as I can and get this thick finish off. It is pretty thick. There is a thick varnish on top of um, the stain that they have on. So it is taking me a little while to get these cleaned up. How awesome my Festool sander is hooked up to my Festool dust extractor. So check this out. It's amazing.
amazing. It just makes me excited and I had to share it. Hey, you guys saw from those time-lapse videos, um, I got the tops sanded, I got the sides sanded. Now I have to go in, it's very ornate in the front. It's really tough to get into the grooves and the curves of the front face of these end tables. So I'm gonna go in with sandpaper, some of my tools that I use to get into those really small crevices. I like this little thing, I'm gonna go in there, use this, I might use my felt block with like 150 grit around it. So what I'm doing right now is called prepping the piece before I paint it. You may say, well, why do you sand the sides and the bottom trim there? For me, when there's a heavy gloss finish, which is what's on here, I want to remove as much as possible. That way I know my paint's going to stick to it and I know I'm not going to have adhesion issues down the road. I know many chalk paint companies tell you no prep, just start painting a piece of furniture. I'm gonna tell you more than likely, you're gonna have adhesion issues and you're gonna have bleed through. That's when like colors come to the surface after you've painted or even at the end stage of your project when you apply the top coat. So I don't want any of that happening here, especially when you paint a piece white. Any light colored paint colors, you need to prep. I cannot stress this enough. So what you're gonna see in this next time-lapse video, you're just gonna see me hand sand um, all those other areas I can't get my sanders into. And what I'm doing is I'm creating what's called, they call it like creating teeth. Um, it's causing it to kind of like stand up. That way when I get in there and I apply shellac next, that'll be my next little part here that I'm gonna do on these pieces. I'm gonna apply shellac from um, the top down, not on the top tops, but on the shell of the piece. Um, after I sand it, I'm going to clean it up with crud cutter, and then I'm gonna apply shellac. Shellac, you need to apply when you have white pieces of furniture. Definitely need to shellac. That's going to block any of the tannins or bleed through coming to the surface. So I don't even wanna take my chances and go, oh, well, this isn't cherry wood, it's not mahogany, probably won't bleed through. Every time I've done that, I've had bleed through. So I like to prep my pieces. I probably go overboard, but it gives me peace of mind knowing I'm not gonna have to redo uh, my piece once I get to the top coat. And if I had bleed through, you gotta start all over again. And then I also know when I'm selling my uh, finished product and people are taking them home, that there aren't gonna be issues with adhesion um, and them chipping and things of that matter. So with all of that said, um, I'm gonna get started and start hand sanding this and then we'll be on to our next step. on these chunky monkey end tables and now it's time to paint them a beautiful ivory color right there this paint company here 
Maison Blanc. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I feel like I keep butchering it. Um, the company is based out of Texas, but she based her company, um, I think she went to France. She studied art there and fell in love with it. So she named her company kind of French. Um, anyways, getting back to my chunky monkey end tables. So I have prepped these. Let's just recap what I did to them. I sanded the tops, sanded as much as I could on the bottom portion. Um, it was hard to get into this area here because there's just all these like curves and deep grooves and weird patterns. So I hand sanded those areas as much as I could just to create a little teeth on it. And then I cleaned them with cred cutter to degloss them as much as I could. And then I applied two coats of shellac. Does that sound like a lot of prep? It sure does. And is it gonna be worth it? Absolutely. So I am a big, 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 big cheerleader for prepping your pieces of furniture because you know what it's gonna do? It's going to save you from problems down the line, okay? Specifically bleed through and yellowing. So especially when you paint with light colors, especially a white paint, an ivory paint, you're, want, you're gonna wanna use shellac because that's what blocks the uh, tannins and the yellowing com from coming through. And I always do two coats. Don't do one coat because I've done it and I have paid the price. So just do it the right way. That way you are fully onto your next fun part and that's painting. So I'm gonna put this on a time lapse so you guys can see me. Paint the chunky monkey and tables. Let's go. before I put my top coat on. So you're not gonna exactly see me put my top coat on because I have to wheel these, thankfully they're on wheels, into my laundry room. 
why my laundry room is closed off and I'm able to have like a space heater in there and I need that room to get up to around 70 degrees remember you guys when you're applying top coat make sure you're doing it in ideal weather and humidity conditions you want to make sure it's warm enough not too cold not too humid um, you really want to make sure that you're going by the guidelines on the can of the product that you're using so what I'm using for the top coat on these two end tables is General Finishes High Performance Flat. This is water-based. I really love this product. Um, I used to use a lot of um, Minwax Polycrylic, and I like that product. It's I still use it, but I'm finding I really grab this most of the time now. It's a great water-based top coat. It won't yellow your painted pieces of furniture. If, 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 if you prep correctly, and remember I applied shellac to these, so that's gonna block any yellowing coming through, any um, bleed through. This is when it happens. After you've painted your pieces and they look oh so gorgeous, and you apply your top coat, and all of a sudden stains start coming to the surface, it's because you didn't prep correctly. That's why it's so imperative you do it right the first time, then you can be excited about applying your top coat and being close to the finish line with your restoration project. So I'm gonna go do that in my laundry room. I'm gonna apply it. What I use to apply the um, high performance flat, I use a two inch foam brush. This is an old one from another project. Um, it's got my sturdy stick attached to it. Um, and I use, it's called the nylon booty method. I did another YouTube tutorial on this. This works for me. Now, you may not like um, using this method, but I found suggesting it to many people, they really have found great success with it. I wrap a little nylon booty, the ones that you find um, at a shoe store when you don't have a sock to try a shoe on. I buy them in bulk like this from Amazon, and I will put a little nylon booty around my foam brush, and what that does is it helps eliminate buzzle, bubbles um, as you pull and drag that foam brush across your piece of furniture. It's gonna make sure that you have an absolute smooth application. Um, it works for me. I know a lot of other people have had success with it. It's, it's weird, it's awkward. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. So I'm gonna go grab a new foam brush, my little nylon booties, and I'm going to apply that um, water-based top coat all over these end tables on the tops and on the bottom portion it's going to take me a while and then i'm going to be done with this project i'm really excited to present the final photos of what these look that um staged and reassembled and looking beautiful and new so i'm going to get to that and quit rambling okay you guys here is the final look of the chunky monkey end tables i'm pretty proud with how they turned out I really think I brought them into the year of 2021. <laughs> Biscuit, how are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Hi, Boo Boos. Hi. Come on, we're gonna do our little sign off, okay? So if you guys have any questions about any of the steps that I took to restore these end tables, leave it in the comment section. I am happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. If you already have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. Every day I keep seeing my numbers go up and I appreciate all my new subscribers. Thank you so much. And if you have been following me for a while now, I appreciate you too. Um, if you're new, you can start to subscribe to my channel. The button is in the lower right hand corner. It's red, just click on it and then you'll get updated every time I upload a new video. So this concludes the Chunky Monkey End Tables. Hi, Biscuit. <laughs> what do we say, Biscuit, at the end of our videos? What do we say? Wanna put your hood up? Yeah, it is cold, isn't it? It's cold. We say, toodaloo, you guys. Bye.